good morning, and good night. Thanks again for downloading the Body Snatchers podcast. And when you listen, stream, or download straight to your device, CastBox is your best option. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to subscribe and comment. So let's get started. Enjoy the show. All right, guys. Good morning. Good night. Thank you for choosing the Body Snatchers podcast. Uh, sorry we've been away for a little bit. I needed a little bit of a uh, little bit of self time, self help. <laughs> I guess you could say I've had a lot going on this summer with uh, real life, so I apologize that there hasn't been a show for approximately two weeks. We just had to take care of some things. Um, but hey, sometimes uh, that's how it goes. For those of you that have stuck around, uh, thank you. We appreciate it. We're back. Uh, We're back. I'm also joined by Jay, who is sneaking in the background. Jay, say hello officially. Hello, guys. I hope that everyone had a, a merry 4th of July, feeling free on this beautiful Independence Day. Well, what was Independence Day? But yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. I ate a whole tub of ice cream because I hated myself on the 4th <laughs> and just laid in the fetal position. I had a migraine, so the fireworks did wonders for uh, the nap I was trying to take with all the medicine. Yeah, <sighs> sounds about right. Yeah, right? Great timing, migraine. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> So that being said, we did have a chance to check out Spider-Man Far From Home, which is what we will be talking about today, at least a little bit. Man, I I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, I'll I'll say that. Yeah, I'll give you that. Like I I knew that I would enjoy it because you know I'm I'm a little bit of a Spider-Man fanboy. You know, I, I currently am rocking the a Spider-Man wallet from like ten years ago. It's not really that old, but yeah, you know, it, but it was, it was, it was cool. I really, like you said, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Like I, I knew that it was going to be good. I, you know, we come to expect certain things from Marvel at this point, but it was good. It, it was really nice. Oh yeah. It was so good that now me and Jay are going to be extra. Cause we're actually leaving, um, in about an hour to head over to anime Midwest out in, uh, it's, it's quote unquote Chicago, but it's actually Rosemont. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be going out there today dressed up as our favorite spider peoples and uh yeah just have a good time getting back to the movie i uh tom holland spider-man until this movie like it was just kind of lacking something i felt like everything was just like a bit too uh easy for him i felt like the dude was on easy street Mm -hmm. Uh, the first spider-man uh homecoming movie okay yeah we got to see a little bit of him he he did a great job i wasn't upset with him but still everything was just kind of like you had Iron Man like secretly in the background, just kind of, you know, there to pick up the pieces if things hit the fan, so to speak. Yeah. 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 Since the events of, um, you know, the, the most recent Marvel movie leading up to this one for Endgame, it's like, you know, now that Tony's out of the picture, you know, you, you really get to see him struggle and develop as a character and you get to see him, uh, you know, make, naive decisions and you know things of that nature decisions that have consequences and it's kind of cool because he's he's doing these things you know as a you know adolescent punk you know just trying to live his teenage life and they for once are not uh you know going back to uncle ben this and uncle ben that which Mm -hmm. i kind of appreciated so it's like you still get the same feel without you know the same uncle ben story peter you know has some important choices to make he makes the wrong ones things get bad and now he's got to pick up the pieces yeah, yeah, that's that's a nice little quick little summary. Um, I think what I what I appreciated the most was that compared to the other ones, he actually got a, a chance to kind of flex his brain power a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, and the other ones, yeah, okay, he made like a, a some comments that would have you thinking, okay, he knows something about something maybe. But now he's like, oh, you know, quantum physics and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. They, 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 uh, they was kind of ease that in. Cause I feel like they never really touched on that side of, of Peter. You know what I'm saying? The, the brainiac side. And they still really have it. I think that there's certainly a lot of room, you know, for growth as far as that's concerned. So I'm hoping that in, um, you know, the, the third movie, which they have said they're going to do because Tom Holland can't keep his mouth shut uh, <laughs> some time ago that, uh, you know, I, I hope that they dive into it, you know, and, and, you know, maybe bring up like a science fair or something of that nature and, and maybe have him, uh, you know, utilizing some of the stuff. It's, uh, you know, Stark Industries and, you know, people are like, well, Peter, how do you know this? And he's like, what do you mean? You know, and somebody makes a comment like, yeah, you got a gift, you know, that uh, that would be kind of cool. They'd have to be very careful with the way they do it, because if they throw it in too fast, it's going to probably come off kind of crappy, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they'll, you know, handle this the way that they need to yeah. now. 
Um, I kind of want to jump away from Peter, uh, Tom Holland for a second uh, and, and kind of jump around to, you know, some of the other characters. So, I mean, I, I suppose we could start with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. Uh, I, I really liked his uh, his character. I really liked the way that they put everything together. I mean, because anybody who knows Mysterio knew immediately that like he was going to be the main villain, uh, you know, despite what the uh, trailer led you to believe. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, that didn't come off as a surprise whatsoever. I think um, one letdown for me was like the elemental crap that, uh, you know, was fabricated for Mysterio to, you know, look so great and so high and mighty. I really wanted it to be like Sandman or Hydro Man or, you know, something of that nature from what we got. And we mm-hmm. didn't get that. Although um, there is a moment in the movie where they do briefly mention uh, the existence of Hydro Man, um, saying that like he came up on a news article online. Uh, so I thought that that was kind of cool, but a little upsetting. I was I was kind of hoping that somehow they would be tied in and Mysterio was just, you know, jumping on to look like he's better than he is. Because the dude doesn't have any powers. Right. You know? So right. for him to be flying around like shooting beams, I was like, yeah, okay, something's up with that. Like, <laughs> but all right. Yeah. And it was but it was really cool how they how they did Mysterio. Um, like, you know, I didn't know exactly how they were gonna do it, like compared to the comic books, you know, like he was more so like a, a stunt coordinator, you know what I mean? Like failed actor guy. And, yeah. you know, I I, di- I didn't know how it would work. And they found a way to kind of twist it and put it into the MCU, like flawlessly. Like I, I was, I was like, man, this is, this is great. I, I loved it. I loved it all. I agree. And I, I, you know, it's, um, I like this approach better because it makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, it, it just made more sense to have, you know, Mysterio be a, a scientist um, approaching the situation versus just being like a straight actor because it would be incredibly difficult of a pill to swallow to, to try to think of, you know, somebody who's like, I want to be an actor. Um, and now I've created this equipment that is so freaking amazing that it, you know, <laughs> blows everybody's minds because I'm an evil villain. Now. You know what I mean? It's just, I, it's a little far fetched. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this was a, a little easier to um to swallow, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You know, so yeah, that's just kind of where I was with it. But I mean, overall, I mean, his uh the the effects looked amazing. One thing that crossed my mind though that just kind of made me chuckle is like, let's say that Mysterio succeeded, right? Where you know, because his whole thing in this movie was, um, you know. Tony Stark screwed him over and, uh, you know, renamed uh, this invention that he made, called it BARF, uh, you know, was the acronym. And, uh, you know, really just dismantled everything that he was working so hard to build. And he comes back and he's like, you know, Tony Stark's out the game. I got to get, you know, Peter Parker out of the way. And then, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to become, you know, quote unquote, the greatest Avenger ever and, you know, make my tech look so dope. But the problem with that is like, let's say that it did it did succeed and he creates this huge uh, this huge event um, you know, where he flies in, he saves the day visually and, you know, the whole world is like Mysterio, Mysterio, Mysterio. Like what happens when the next, like <laughs> the next like, threat comes. Yeah. When the, the when the next real threat comes <laughs> and, you know, he has to step up to the plate with nothing but, you know, drones to try to fake out the aliens. You know, I, it's just, uh, I, I don't know. That kind of crossed my mind. I was like, this dude is so obsessed. He did not think this through like at all. Like he would just be like, oh crap. Well, fame was nice while I had it. I'm out. Right. Hey, man. I mean, you know, never mind. I was going to I was going to say something, but now I'm not going <laughs> to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. Not so okay. close to Independence Day. I can't oh, can't do geez. that to America. Yeah, but yeah. Um, no, don't you dare. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. And and I'm sure that he, he didn't think that all the way through. But just with the illusion, the illusion tech and stuff, since you talked about that for a second, um, I was I was blown away when like you know once it really got going and he like had Spider Man kind of caught in the fold, I was like DC y'all yeah you got nothing for me you know what I mean like <laughs> I, I'm just like like you know because they had a Scarecrow in the Dark Knight but it's no I was like it's it's bad it's real I, bad you for know y'all. I I like Scarecrow in um in, in Dark Knight not as much as you like Mysterio. Well, I mean, okay, and that's fair, but it's just uh, they're kind of on different levels, you know. Scarecrow uh, is more of a small time, you know, type of guy, at least the way that he's written uh, in most instances, you know. And Mysterio is just a bit flashier, 
Yeah. And, and and plus, you know, Mysterio had access to, you know, all this crazy tech in order to make, um, you know, his his little invention, you know, uh, go to the scale that it did. You know, Scarecrow, yeah, he had gas like all over the place. But I mean, it's harder to control something that's causing you to hallucinate and be scary versus, um, you know, we spent hours, uh, days, you know, weeks programming like this crazy light show. Yeah, right, right. And, you know, and Mysterio had a whole team. You right. You right. I, and I'm not and I'm not trying to defend DC. I, you know, like I, I will for the sake of I like Scarecrow, but DC, you're right. They need to definitely step their game up um, in some aspects. Aquaman was pretty good. Um, Man of Steel was pretty good. That's, that's about all I have to say about that. Anything else was pretty bad. And Aquaman could have done without like the excess corny love scenes. Yeah, yeah, it, well, it we, was we talked about it. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, you know what? I, I gave him Aquaman, and I, I enjoyed Shazam. I was like, I need one more. If you give me three solid movies in a row, I, I'm I'm back in the fold. Let's do it. So we See, going. Shazam was like a four for me. So. You know, oh, it, it wasn't that bad. Dang, and all four of them numbers, Ooh. yeah, all, all four of them thumbs are up for making good. I love, <laughs> I love her. I don't care how many times I have to say it. I want the world to know. Making good if you're out there listening, and I highly <laughs> doubt that you are. But if you are, just know. It's okay to go into my inbox. It's fine. <laughs> you have my permission. Permission mm-hmm. slide. Yeah, recently recently updated my uh, my Instagram name, so feel free to find me. It's uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Tino underscore plus underscore ultra Tino plus ultra. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> going off on this uh, tangent um, as the movie kicks off, I really, really liked uh, even though like they, they wrote it off as being like a corny type of setup. Um, the Whitney Houston uh, in memory of the fallen Avengers thing. Yeah. You know, where she's, uh, you know, singing and like it was actually done beautifully. And then like, uh, you know, they kind of pull away from like the actual intro to the movie and it ends up being just, uh, you know, like a little high school news show or whatever. So that kind of kind of killed it at the end. But it worked. You know, I mean, I don't know how else they would have tied it in without making it like a little too over the top. So I wasn't mad about it. But I, I just thought that was pretty cool. It gave everything a different feel um you know you didn't have the crazy aggressive music like it was like it, it starts off with you and your feels a little bit right just a little bit just a, a pinch of the feels not not too heavy you know uh but yeah no i it, it was great it was great but next come on next characters we we went on a, a major tangent back to the okay, other characters okay. so uh i love uh more so than i've ever loved any spider-man leading lady role uh for zendaya as mj I absolutely just was in in love with her character. He said like a thousand times, yes. But you know what it is is like a lot of these characters, um, you know, when it comes to women who are not intended to be the superhero, uh, they kind of get strong roles to an extent, but um, usually that's after character development and they start off as like a damsel in distress. And like, okay, like uh, Kirsten Dunst's character from like the original. Um, she she did a fine job as, as as MJ. Sure, nobody's nobody's gonna argue that. But the whole feel of that film is kind of what you know screwed her up, because everything was like very corny on purpose because they wanted it to feel like you were just kind of reading pages out of the comic, or at least that's the way that I interpreted it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not mad at her for what she did, but I just I feel like we're at a point with movies that we don't need to do that anymore. You know, we want to see as if this were real, not like, you know, a corny, uh, like a goosebumps version, you know, or like Nickelodeon (laughs) or something made it. And like this, they just pumped in more money. I don't want to see that. You know, I don't want to hear the damsel in distress, classic lines and all that, all that. And that's where I think uh, Zendaya did a good job. Um, Somebody on Twitter had said, you know, it felt like she was just being herself. And as corny as that sounds, I have to agree with it. You know, any woman, you know, in my life that, you know, I personally enjoyed their company or actually been attracted to uh, has, you know, like they just have like their own personality. They're not saying what you they you know, what they think you want to hear and all that kind of stuff. You know, they're they're not the damsel in distress type. They're not just saying like cliche lines when you guys go out on a date, but they're just themselves. You know, it's like like a like a bro. You know, she's like one of the guys, you know, th- those are the women that, you know, that are just themselves that are the best type to be around. And when Peter and Mary Jane have these, uh, I should say MJ rather than Mary Jane technically. Um, but when they have their, uh, you know, moments where they're talking and they're awkwardly, uh, you know, 
trying to be friends, but express that they like one another, but they're also holding true to their values. Um, I don't know, man, like just something about it, put a big smile on my face. It never felt forced. It just felt super like natural. Like as if somebody just, you know, walked in on those two hanging out with a camera, it did not feel like a movie. And that's exactly what I, I didn't know I wanted it, but like, that's exactly what I think we needed. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And like you said, it, it didn't feel forced. And that's, that's really the main thing is that it wasn't, it, it didn't even, it, it just came off just so natural. You know what I mean? It definitely, like you said, it felt like, you know, you just walked up on some high school kids with the camera, which you shouldn't do, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's cool. Yeah. Bad. Don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, again, it, it, you know, it made me smile. I remember, you know, it reminded me of, you know, when I was younger and, you know, would have them little, you know, love flings or whatever. And it was just, it was just really happy, you know, like I loved it. And speaking of happy, that's my next favorite <laughs> character in this movie. Um, so Happy Hogan, who was, uh, I mean, people forget, but Happy was in the original uh, 2008 Iron Man. All right. You know, he was in there and, uh, you know, did a wonderful job, I think. But his character development has like just gone through the roof, you know, and in, in this, he really steps in and and takes over, you know, the mantle kind of for Peter where Tony once was, if not doing an even better job at it, to be honest. Um and it's funny because like he kind of didn't want anything to do with it because obviously, you know, he's got his little fling with uh, Aunt May or he's trying to have one rather. And, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever that was, I was just comical all the way across the board. But, you know, there were there were times where May would be like, oh, you know, and Happy wants to talk to you, Peter. And he kind of gave him a look like, uh, no. <laughs> right. Say it no. Um, but w- when the time came to step up, when Peter was was broken, when he, you know, had to accept the fact that he screwed up, he made these mistakes, he was tricked, you know, and, and he wasn't good enough at that point in time. You know, Happy was like, I got you, you know, like, like, we're going to figure this out. I'm going to be here side by side. I don't have powers. You know, I'm not a warrior, you know, but like, I'm going to I'm going to help you. And that to me just uh, spoke volumes of his character. So I think um, John, I forget how to pronounce his last name, like Fevru or whatever. Mm-hmm. I know he does that like cooking show, so I should know this. But um, yeah, I mean, he he did an amazing job. Like I was just so happy. And I hope that he gets the credit that he deserves for what he put into this role, because it really um, kind of laced up this movie for me, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it is, you know, is everybody around Spider-Man is what makes spider-man you know made, made him the best that he could be you know what i mean like because like you said when he was down and out he was like all right well you know i can't really do too much i can take care of the music i, I can I, I got the soundtrack i got that on, <laughs> on lock but what you gonna do what are you gonna do right now like let's do it. oh yeah and, and you know the um, i don't know if it did this for you i'm assuming yes because it was meant to and it hit me hard because i'm such a big robert downey jr uh, iron man fan so it's gonna be hard moving forward without him in, in this franchise, but when happy, you know, picks up Peter and, you know, he's, uh, he's finding his way and he's getting ready for round two and, you know, to do what he's got to do. Uh, and they, you know, he needs a new costume and happy looks back at like, you know, Peter, who's he, who's just given access to, to, you know, build his suit as if Tony would dude, that gave me all kinds of feels. Like I knew it was, it was meant to do it. And, you know, I, I didn't want to be sucked in. I didn't, I could not help, (laughs) But just be like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. Like, he's he's in there. He's doing it. And, you know, uh, in respect to what you were saying earlier, I feel like that that little genius nod kind of clicked in his brain where he was navigating this equipment, you know, as if he's had it his whole life. Like, he was mm-hmm. going through and he was just determined. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I did really enjoy that section of the movie. Probably my favorite point in the movie, if I'm being honest with you. And the costume that he makes um, you know, shout out to uh, Steve Dicko's, uh, you know, original Spider-Man. Oh my God, dude. Like when he came down and like the parachute's going, okay, cool. Like I liked it. But then right before he hits the ground, he opens up his arms and he's got the little, uh, the web gliders. Yeah. yeah. I could have got up and threw my popcorn at somebody. <laughs> like I was so excited, like in excitement to be clear. Right. Um, right. He said, yes. Oh my God. That suit just, was, that was everything. I honestly, um, I might have been more excited to see that than I was the Iron Spider. Obviously, the Iron Spider's got the badass arms and the you know light up eyes and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. But have y'all ever seen Steve Ditko Spider Man? Like, <laughs> come on, man! Like, like do, you, do you understand the history here? He's got little gliders. Like, that's exactly <laughs> what I needed in this movie. So yeah, I was with it. Um, but just wanted to bring that, you know. So I know we're getting uh, a little bit of close to time here, but let's 
bring up some other things. Um, one of my favorite things about the movie was that they finally addressed sp- uh, Peter's spider sense. Um, and it, it just made so much sense because, you know, they, they bring it up where Peter acknowledges the fact that like he knows, um, you know, it, it exists and he doesn't really know how to control it or understand it. And it's hilarious because they kept calling it the damn Peter tingle. <laughs> May don't call it. <laughs> I'm a, a tingle. I'm like, you got, oh, man. You got your Peter tingle? <laughs> <laughs> you like, it's not working? <laughs> yeah, no. That that was pretty cool. And 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 it's, it's really cool what they're able to do with, like, just this version of Spider-Man. Um, you know, you get the build up, but without the Uncle Ben origin story. You know what I mean? So it's just like you you get you get him being the, a neighborhood you know spider-man and now he's figuring out well you know what i'm not going to be a neighborhood spider-man anymore I'm, you know when bigger stuff come up i'm going to have to be the one to answer the call uh, oh yeah so it was, it was just it's, it's really cool that you do see like legit growth like in just different aspects so it's just it was it was really well done i was thoroughly impressed well, you know, and, and speaking of growth, okay, so the, okay, the Peter Tingle, you know, all jokes aside, like, okay, they're finally addressing the fact that the spider sense exists and he doesn't understand it. And, like, it's almost like the point of this movie is to help him, you know, master it, at least like the, you know, level one, because he gets folded by Mysterio. Uh, and in my head, I'm thinking, okay, like, spider sense, like, you know, you guys have brought it up, you know, why is this not a thing? Why are you not trying to use it or, you know, whatever. Uh, so when they get to the final fight scene, oh my God, like this fight scene, I, the emotion that, that Tom Holland demonstrated was just off the charts. Like it, it was so good. I mean, a, a, anybody who was involved in making the scene, I mean, pat yourself on the back. You did an amazing job because he's fighting Mysterio and he, you know, pretty much kind of tunes into his spider sense and he's, he's angry. You know, mm-hmm. this is not, this is not normal, Peter. Like, I think I can do it. I can, you know, whatever. Like you feel all his emotion, his, his rage, the way he's been tormented, what his friends have gone through, uh, you know, what's, what's happened to Tony and how people are, you know, wanting him to take up the mantle when he, you know, f- after talking to happy, understands he's never going to be Iron Man. There's never going to be another one. He's got to be the best Peter he can be. And he's fighting, you know, Mysterio and he's, he's going down that, uh, it's like a straight pathway, although he doesn't know that because all the illusions are going off. And you see Peter just smashing the hell out of these robots, uh, the, the drones rather, and each one that he's like dodging and destroying. Like, tell me you didn't feel that? I felt yeah. every piece yeah. of like the anger. I was like, dude, I love this. Like, yeah. yes, get it his was, ass. Even even before he did that, they kind of did like a little callback to uh, uh, Captain America with Thor's hammer. I don't know if you noticed that when he picked up, he like he picked up the sign and then he picked up like. It was like a piece of a drone that he was like kind of slinging like uh, he, you know, like Cap was doing with the hammer. I thought that was really cool. I was just like it, it definitely it had a chance to show him really fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he got into some scuffles, you know, he did some stuff, but he was like legit like, OK, I'm about to test some stuff up Yeah, Yeah. He was like, all right. Yeah, he was pissed. And, 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 you know, and he finally understood his, his spider sense. I mean, so he was, you know, like I said, <laughs> dodging things left and right. And just the accuracy, I was like, oh my God, like, this is so good. I could watch that scene all day. Uh, you know, so that was great. And, and, uh, bringing up what you just said with those throwbacks, uh, there's a scene where happy, um, is getting attacked by a drone and he grabs a shield off a statue and tries to throw it like cap. And it doesn't, <laughs> it does not work. <laughs> and that was just, I, oh man, that was, that was funny as hell to me. I love these uh, these little throwbacks that they do in nods. Um, now, one thing that I really wanted to make sure that I bring up before we, uh, you know, we we get out of here, and maybe you felt the same way. The first uh, phase of the movie, when they're in Venice and mm-hmm. um, Mysterio is is fighting the uh, the water elemental, and Peter gets involved. How freaking amazing was it to see Tom Holland flipping around? you know, as if he were Spider-Man, because that's something that we've never gotten in, in any of these movies uh, to, to this kind of depth, I should say, you know, like they gave us a couple right. of minutes of him flipping around and they, you know, really showing off his acrobatic athletic ability um, in a, in a way that we've just never gotten, you know, it wasn't just him kind of climbing a wall or doing a quick backflip or something like this dude was all over the place, full scene as Spider-Man with a little, like, you know, basically a garbage bag. He had that little, uh, he had that little mask on. 
and I was feeling it. Like I was just like, this is yeah. Okay. All right. I needed this. Like somebody thought of that. Like why, why haven't we done this yet? Because you got, you got facial expressions, um, you know, to some degree and you know, just what he was going through. So he was able to con- really convey Spider-Man better than you can having, uh, you know, the mask with the eyes, you know, that, you know, kind of flex in and out. Like it just, I don't know. It had, it had a lot of emotion in those scenes and it was yeah. just fun to me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Speaking of callbacks, a uh, little nods to things, um, the, the the little hint, not necessarily to what they're going to do in the future, but to what they did in the comics with the Marvel zombies. I thought that that was really cool. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to go into details about it, but I was like, I was, I was, I saw that and I was like, okay, we may, I doubt that we'll ever do it in the movies. But just that they did that, I was like, "That's pretty awesome." If you if you say so, man. If you say so. So, um, all right, guys. Well, I I think that's uh you know pretty much all the points that you know we wanted to make. I mean, we could go on and on about this movie for probably hours and talk about um you know the blipped uh, age teenagers, you know the, the the terminology that they gave them, um the fact that they finally called the this universe uh you know Earth six one six, even though Mysterio technically speaking should have had no knowledge of that it was still pretty cool that like they call it 616 and you know, they said he came from earth 833 and just, just so many, you know, little things, you know, Edith and all, all that, but you know, we're not going to talk your ears off, you know? So if you guys uh, haven't seen the movie, uh, I apologize if we ruin anything for you, I'll make sure to put spoilers in the, um, you know, in the comments as well as the title, uh, you know, just so you guys know what you're getting into before you decide to listen to this podcast. And if you have seen it, um, talk to us in the comments, you know, through whatever platform you like, you know, what did you think? What were some of your likes? What were some of your dislikes? Um, you know, we'd love to hear from you. So make sure you head over to body snatchers, media.com. We're on, you know, Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. So yeah, just, you know, talk to us any type of way you want. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a little conversation going. Anything you'd like to add Jay? Uh, well, you already told the people to go watch it. And if you did watch it, go watch it again, because, I'm sure you go. You'll miss. You missed something. I went. I went back and I watched it a second time. I watched it with my my dad uh, yesterday. Actually, that's we. That's what we ended up doing. Um, and it's it's just man. And then with the end credit scenes, like oh, stop it! It's too much. I know, man. Too much. I know. Make sure you guys stay for the end credit Please scenes. Stay for the it. end credit scenes. Yeah, it's that you. You definitely need to. Um, only thing I'll bring up uh, about the end credit scene was that they brought uh, Jonah Jameson back from the original Spider-Man. And I flipped. I was like, um... Dude. I was so happy. Because he's, he's just too perfect. I, you know, I don't really know. Like, I hear that voice, and I'm like, yes, yeah. J.K. JK Simmons, man, he's he's just perfect. And, yeah, it's just... It's going to be good, guys. It's it's going to be good. So I'm excited for the third one. Again, you know, everything that I said, head over to buysanctionsmedia.com. And, uh... Yeah, we're getting out of here. So have a good morning or good night or all oh, that. Man. See you at Anime Midwest. Yes, yes. We're about to go ahead and have some fun, dress up, have a good time. Hi. All right, Let's guys. All right, peace. Later. <laughs>